Hello, there is Fimpossible Creations and there is another tutorial for Ragdoll Animator 2. This time we will focus on the settings which are really important for play mode to make your characters behave in the right way. But before that we will do a quick setup for a new model. Ok, let's go. First I will drag model on a scene, it's Demon Minion made by Enhanced Studio. I will do a quick setup with automatic detection. Let's turn on gizmos and check what we've got. An auto rig added many bones, but I want a bit more simple rig, so let's remove shoulders, spine bone and neck. Right. Now let's tweak colliders, let's auto adjust and I will tweak head. Switch to sphere. And I will add basic boxes to mask the horns. Ok, it will be enough for tutorial purposes. Now I will quickly adjust the spine bones. Let's go with legs. Ready, now arms. And hand. Now since we removed some bones from the setup, we need to adjust the physics mass settings. So I will basically trigger the auto adjustments here. Yeah, now it feels better. Now another arm. Ok. Legs are good because we not removed any bone. And let's check core. Yeah, it needs to be adjusted so let's call it. Yeah, that feels more right. If you got lost with this mass settings, check first tutorial. Now let's go back to setup and let's add tail chain. Let's enter skeleton in the hierarchy, find tail bone and add the rest of the bones. Ok, tweak colliders. Now check physics settings. Eh, mass is too big so let's adjust it automatically, yeah. And actually for tails we can switch unlimited rotations because it will work better if it will not be limited like the arm or leg. Now let's quickly check if everything works properly. Yeah. So let's move to clue of this tutorial. The setup bookmark. And there you see two sub bookmarks, references and main physics, but let's focus on the references now. Base transform should be bottom most object of your character, like character movement controller, and by default base transform is object to which ragdoll animator is attached. But if you want to keep your ragdoll animator and other plugins in a separate object, like this, then you can drag and drop the main object here and you should be good to go. But for now let's restore everything. Ok. Mechanium is reference to your animator, which can be very helpful for different features you will see in a future tutorials, but it's not required by ragdoll animator 2 to work. There's also a quick view on the anchor bone to just ensure it's assigned properly. Now very important parameter which is ragdoll dummy layer. So you should create unique layer for the ragdoll colliders to prevent collisions between like capsule collider of the whole character controller and the ragdoll colliders. You can quickly do it by hitting layer, add layer, now let's call it controller, another one ragdoll. So character controller object will be controller and ragdoll dummy ragdoll. Now in the project physics settings you can ignore collision between controller and ragdoll. Check Unity documentation for more information about that. There is also another approach using extra features since there is ignore collision extra feature and you can select collider to ignore ragdoll colliders with it and that would work too. This humanoid toggle is actually not very important. There you again see preference mass field for quick adjusting, quick ragdoll size sliders, connected mass multiply and colliders physics materials will be covered in another tutorial. Ragdoll logic is just switch for different use of ragdoll animator, just for the case if you want to play on a dev pose and nothing more. You can use pre-generate dummy button to create dummy before play mode, if you would like to get access to the physics components to use scene references. Reference typos is used when ragdoll animator is initializing 
to maximize default animation matching using just Unity configurable gems, which is most performant, but it's refreshed automatically, so you don't need to bother about it. Now the main physics. These settings are applied to all rigid bodies and joints of the ragdoll, and when you change them in the inspector window, they are dynamically updated, so you can watch how they are affecting physical behavior during play mode. So first parameter is ragdoll dummy layer again, just to remind you that you should use it. And then default rigid body settings, like interpolation for smooth movement, collision detection mode, drag value, which you can use for a resistance effect for falling characters, applying some angular drag to prevent endlessly rotating bones, I not found any good use for joint contact distance yet, but there is good use for joint limit spring. Thanks to that you can make joint rotating limits more soft, since in some cases the hard limits can cause some jittering. And max angular velocity parameter. Since default unity max angular speed is like 6, which is pretty slow, here we can adjust it. Max velocity on 0 means it's unlimited. But if your project features very quick moving characters with physics, sometimes they can get stuck in a wall, for example, then limiting velocity can prevent it from happening. No gravity on standing will be used in next tutorial. Max the penetration velocity can make colliders pop out smoothly when they are overlapping. For projection mode and preprocessing, check Unity documentation, but you will be good to go leaving it off. Now let's go to motion. But let's switch to the settings sub bookmark. There is few extra settings which are related with ragdoll initialization, so let's cover them in this tutorial. Most of the settings are available only during edit mode, so when we enter play mode you will see they are grayed out. Let's start with calibrate. It is preparing bones for procedural animation, and in case if you don't have animator, and you have this option disabled, Ragdoll will react in a weird way, like without any energy. But when animator is on, everything works properly. So if all bones are keyframe animated, you can switch calibrate off to save few ticks for a performance. But still, in some cases, even if character is animated, one of the bones might be not keyframe animated and it will act weird. So by default calibrate is on. To prevent situations like this. Animate physics is switching automatically if you change the animator animate physics mode. If you don't have animator assigned then animate physics will not be grayed out. Apply positions is turning on positions for the body pose since by default we are using just joints rotations and it can cause floor overlap with a foot like you see there because even if joints positions are locked they are still moving a bit so it's turning on true joint position. And then also can be really helpful switch for the kinematic bones, like for example when you use kinematic hand. Without apply positions it always be a bit off. Optimize on zero blend is turning off ragdoll animator when ragdoll blend comes to zero. like you can see on a debugger. Then switching it back on can cause some jiggle, because physics are refreshed. So if you need seamless ragdoll blend, you should keep this parameter off. But is it true? With optimize on zero blend enabled, you can turn on fade in animation. Then you will avoid the jiggle, because every time ragdoll animator gets enabled, there is applied fade in animation. And you can watch the value of a fade in there, so you can use this fade-in animation in different cases. Hide dummy in scene view will make generated physical object hidden, because by default you can see it here and you can debug it, but if you don't need it, you can keep your hierarchy clean. Ignore bounded colliders is turning off collision between colliders which are touching each other in a setup, for example, if you have a very big arm collider and some spine bone collider gets in the way, thanks to bounce ignore, you can avoid jittering caused by self-collision like there. But sometimes it can ignore too many colliders 
and you can get clipping arm through the spine so for some of those it will keep it off for some on and here ragdoll dummy layer for a third time just to remind you you can turn on unscaled time to compute ragdoll animator operations during time scale zero pause uh, fading animation we covered already ignore source skeleton colliders is finding colliders in a source skeleton in the kyber key if they are any and ignoring ragdoll dummy colliders with it so there is no self overlapping collision going on wait for init is ensuring that unity configurable joints are initialized properly and it's turned it on by default to keep everything right but in case you want to start with ragdoll animator disabled then turn it on during play mode by some action it will result in a small jump like you see here but when you turn it off and then start ragdoll animator it will be not noticeable but again you can always use the fade in animation instead and last thing is target parent for the ragdoll dummy so by default the physical object is generated just on a scene but you can choose any other object to put it inside like for example self object there is it okay and that's all for this tutorial well this one was more like manual video but i hope you found it interesting and the next one will be much more fun leave a like subscribe for more thank you for watching and see you next time bye bye